The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 328 Cleaning Days The insides of the unnamed airship were dim, lit naturally by windows that weren't facing the sun. The library smelled of cleanser. Clearly, Shinespark had focused on that the most. As Starlight and the procession of ponies trotted down the hallway, they passed door after open door, plush beds removed and porthole windows opened to help air the rooms out. She saw the room Maple had chosen with her back in Ironridge, glimmering spotlessly and devoid of any personal belongings. In one door was Shinespark, awkwardly crouching due to her thick, clunky cast and scrubbing away at a stain on the floor with her forehooves. Her mane was back in the world's shortest ponytail, and her horn looked blackened and covered in soot. Starlight wondered what kind of spell had done that, and if it was why she was cleaning physically instead of levitating her mop. She didn't turn around at the sound of approaching hoofsteps, but her ears did. Hey, she said, staying focused on scrubbing. Hey, yourself, Sparky, Valet replied, pushing to the front of the convoy. Still down in the dumps. You shouldn't need to ask that, Shinespark said, voice flat and lifeless. Willow's mouth creased in a worried frown, and White Chocolate took a step back, looking nervous. Starlight watched through a narrow gap in the door, and Valet stuck out her tongue. Nah, nah, I totally don't. I just feel like it. Don't antagonize her, please, Dior murmured. Some of us have gained less and lost more than others these past few days. Hey, at least she still has her mane. Valet tugged self-consciously at the ruinously uneven patch where Herman had sheared off part of her emerald locks during their fight. Shinespark stopped scrubbing, shuddered. Shinespark, Mitriona asked, suddenly gliding up behind a crowd with her way of walking that made it look like her hooves weren't even moving beneath her robe. How is the power restoration coming along? Shinespark hung her head. I haven't started yet. Is there anything I can do to help? Madriona asked, pushing the other ponies aside through some invisible quality in her presence. I feel like it would be nice having the power back on. No, Shinespark said, still slumped. Sorry, Mother. You don't usually call me that, Madriona remarked, stepping forward. Willow pushed Valet back with a limb, starlight and white chocolate needing no hint to sense that they were intruding. In the room, Shinespark finally looked up, gritting her teeth. I need laughs from here by his lab to fix the power, but I don't want to go. Wuss, Valet mouthed the Starlight, raising an eyebrow and cracking a smile. Starlight didn't return it, and Willow shot her a dirty glare. What in particular do you need, dear ask, still in the room? I'm thinking of exploring the city a little myself. I could always look for something. Shinespark fixed her deep blue eyes on him. A lot of things, she said. I'll need... I'll need... She bit her lip. I'll... She went back to hanging her head. I don't remember. I think a walk would do you a little good, Dior offered, his voice slightly sing-song. Maybe. Shinespark looked away, pacing to the open window and sticking her head out. The ship was still being watched, some mares coming and some going, and all either watching with wide eyes or chattering and speculating with interest. They're so happy, though. They have no understanding of why we're here. I can't be surrounded by that right now. We don't. We can't. Dior nudged her shoulder supportively. Sister, wasn't a large part of your role hearing and helping with the burdens of the populace? I would have thought seeing that many ponies happy and carefree in the face of all that has happened would be an inspiration. It was, Shinespark snapped, eyes suddenly watery. And that's the problem. If I go out there, I'm going to break down and that will make them sad too. Just... Give me a little more time. I'm stronger than this. I'm pulling myself back together. I'll be better soon. Willow frowned, stepping forward. May I speak my mind? Shinespark shook her head, eyes clenched. Go ahead. I am a native of Riverfall. Willow took two more steps. And I think you're not giving the ponies here enough credit. Many of us are naive or don't understand how the bigger world works, but are also both generous and enjoy learning about it. If you went outside visibly troubled, I think a lot of the ponies you met would want to help, and wouldn't at all resent knowing the world can be a bad place or shedding tears for it. Huh. Shinespark looked away. I'll get better, though. It's not their job to worry about that. 
But if they want to, Willow said. Not are willing to. Want to. Especially right now, when every one of them knows big things have happened, and the only one telling it is a griffin who likes battles, likes heroics, and skips over emotions. You shouldn't feel bad for having a story that needs to be told. Shinespark wiped her eyes. Thanks, but I'm good. I told you, I'm coming to terms with it. Enough to go out and get what you need to fix the power, Metrion asked softly from a corner. You know what? Shinespark's straightened up, eyes narrowing. I am. I'm going to Dad's lab right now. I'm not stopping for anything, and I'll be just fine. Watch me. She stomped out the door and down the corridor, cast clunking against the floor, and a grimace on her face, leaving her cleaning materials in the middle of the room. Everyone looked after her, and Willow and Metriona exchanged a glance. She's not fine, is she? Willow murmured. Nah! Valet shook her head broadly and slowly, making the point as big as she could. That is one not fine filly. Metriona sighed, hanging her head. If you could look out for her, that would be appreciated, she said, mostly to Willow. You sound like you've done this before. Willow smiled sadly. Mother's instinct. Is there anything we should know? No, Metriona murmured. Not if you've heard about Anridge already. I would appreciate it if the power in the ship was fixed, though. There is an audio file on the bridge terminal, and I think hearing it might help her recover her spark. Valet let out a huge belch. Gotcha covered, she promised. I'll pester her if she forgets. Also, she tugged on the bandages around her burnt forehoof and then the sling holding her injured wing to her side. Think at least a little of what's getting her is medical stuff? I'm going a little nuts from these myself, and I don't even clunk like a falling coconut everywhere I go. Possibly. Matriona looked out the window, the riverbank still teeming with mares on the other side. Anything that could remind her of how many times she lost. At the dam, against the spirit, against Herman, whom you beat? Although... Removing reminders of failure isn't the same as coming to terms with it. Valet rolled her eyes, chuckling. Valet rolled her eyes, chuckling. Yeah, can't say I wish I could relate. I mean, losing stinks and all, but I never lose. Starlight raised an eyebrow at her as everyone shuffled out of the half-cleaned room. Had she forgotten about the mercenaries in the Flame District already? And... Of chapter 328.